Hello my soccer universe. It happened that for the first time since I'm actively watching soccer, Canada has qualified for the, for the World Cup. Long overdue, I must say. I always was wondering what was happening. But yeah, I am overjoyed for to see Final, Final, Final Canada. Um, the first soccer game that I ever saw was the 1986 World Cup Final. So I just missed out on watching Canada. So I'm very happy that this finally happens. I always was wondering why it didn't, but it's, I said this in another video. So I'm very happy. It also means for the results yesterday um, that the United States are more or less there unless some freakish result happens. But you know, just four years ago, a bit more than four years ago, something really freakish happened that they didn't qualify. Uh, Mexico also looking really, really, really good. Uh, but... It's a little bit more likely, a teeny bit more likely that Mexico will be overtaken by Costa Rica. Actually, overall, it's kind of tied up in CONCACAF. Uh, the top four are only separated by six points, which means three qualifiers and um, one in the playoff. Against what we now know, uh, uh, probably uh, New Zealand, although the Solomon Islands are in there as well. So uh, let's briefly talk about that. I also want to briefly mention the World Cup draw and uh, finish it also with some thoughts about uh, who am I going to support now that <laughs> the way things have been going for my team. So uh, rather interesting stuff, I think, overall. Okay. Uh, in CONCACAF, we had that uh, Canada clinched their spot with a uh, thoroughly deserved 4-0 over Jamaica. Uh, Laris, Buchanan, already set them, of course, in the uh, first, first half and then uh, Holid and an own goal make it 4-0. Four, four, four so uh, and those two come, 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 come rather late, but I think jubilant scenes in Toronto celebrating uh, this win, and as I said, is a first, this is only the second time that Canada qual qualifies, so it's a pretty big result. Uh, we also had that uh, Costa Rica kept their chances more or less alive with a 2 1 over El Salvador, meaning Costa Rica, uh, with that and then paired with what the US did, uh, secured their at least a playoff spot. Uh, the US handily beat Panama, and it seeming, uh, you know. Getting it off their chest early on with Pulisic, uh, Ariola and Ferreira having it already 3 0 at halftime, which is something that the US haven't done a whole lot. And then uh, Mexico also gets their win, uh, even a 1 0 at Honduras. And so we have Canada qualified with 28, United States 25 plus 13 goal difference, Mexico 25 plus 7 goal difference, and Costa Rica 22 plus 3 goal difference. So in order for we have the final game between Costa Rica and the United States. The only way that uh, the United States do not quali qualify directly is if Costa Rica beats them by six goals, which I would consider highly, highly unlikely. Uh, Mexico a little bit more likely because, you know, there's only a four goal swing needs to happen towards Costa Rica. I don't see it happening. After all, maybe Mexico play El Salvador at home. But let's say if Mexico were to lose and Costa Rica get a three-goal uh, win, that might be an opportunity. But I think CONCACAF is more or less settled. And yeah, I really, as I said, I'm really happy with this Canadian team. Goes to show you how uh, with an identity and a clear idea of how to play, you actually go places, which neatly, before we go to other World Cup, brings me to Austria, where now, of course, the knives are out. Uh, Fola hopefully is gone, um, where uh, the new president, uh, absolute idiot, uh, said the sporting director, who got hired after failing as a sporting director and as a coach at Rapid, and was only the under-19 coach for a couple of games, he and presented no concept. He they just wanted to get rid of Willy Rutensteiner, who was so successful. But he kind of always ignored the volunteers in the um, you know at the leadership of the Austrian Football Federation. And the knives are out now in all directions. Um, the parameters is that uh, he sh we uh, Schöttl should find a suitable, an available, and a financeable coach. 
with the latter one being the big one uh, and everyone is kind of thinking already yeah this might be Peter Stöger who can do a lot with very little but does very little with a whole lot similar to Foda and while I think he would be a better solution than Foda I don't think he's suitable for this national team at all and the big uh, the big problem is that the decision makers in the Austrian Football Federation and I repeat myself are not football people those are lawyers, those are mayors, those are judges, you know, volunteer people. Volunteer people that have little, uh, that are very, that do very good things for the amateur area, but have no idea how the, how the professional game is run. And the only co ent entity that could do that, that's the Bundesliga, who have three votes. All the others have only one, but the Bundesliga always goes with the majority of what the others are, are doing. So it's an absolute, absolute disaster. In that sense, uh, even on Austrian state theater television, which have been very cozy with the Football Federation, there's already a lot of criticism on that. Uh, it is shown everywhere, the media is getting aboard. There's a sliver of hope that something good will happen. Um, so Austria will not support at the World Cup. Uh, Austria has already been shown by Wales. Uh, Wales, much less talented side. Yes, they have Gareth, they have Gareth Bale, but at least many uh, pundits in Austria say it was not because of Gareth Bale that Austria lost but because of that Wales had an identity that they maximized their strengths, whereas Austria kind of uh, played it safe without using the strengths of the team. So um, just a side two. So Austria will not support at the World Cup. Italy will not support at the World Cup, but fortunately two of my other favorite national teams are still there, which are of course the Netherlands and Argentina. And Argentina for me is anyway kind of a how to say, uh, more or less Italy, but Spanish speaking uh, in many, 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 many ways. So uh, those are the teams that I'll probably go go for. And there will always be, if Peru makes it, I'll put all my support behind Peru, giving the family ties to that uh, wonderful country and so on and so forth. Um, let's go on, um, Nash, uh, back to World Cup qualification in the Oce Oceania region. The semifinals have been played. Uh, where the Solomon Islands beat Papua New Guinea 3-2 and New Zealand beat Tahiti only 1-0. So we have Solomon Islands and New Zealand for a final uh, playoff spot, uh, intercontinental playoff against the fourth place team from CONCACAF. So it actually fits quite neatly. So probably it will be New Zealand against Costa Rica, which I think is a rather intriguing tie. Australia is already in the AFC playoff waiting for the fourth place team, uh, fifth place team in um Conme Bowl, which we have to see. Uh, it is at the moment the odds are for Peru, but it's not a done deal yet. Um, of course, uh, next Tuesday is the big day where we have all the uh, big games. Um, we start again with Asia. As I said, it's uh, the interesting part is who else will go in the AFC playoff uh, between United Arab Emirates, Iraq. Uh, it's like 70% uh, Emirates, uh, 31 Iraq. But I think I could imagine that there is a turnaround because Iraq play uh, Syria and the Emirates have to play Korea, so um, got to see there. Uh, everything else is more or less decided because Australia are in the third spot in the other group and Japan and Saudi Arabia already qualified as a South Korea and Iran. Um, then we, of course, have the African playoffs. I did not go give you the chances from my model, the lad, the lad, that's the We have the early games, Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, Egypt, and I realized that didn't switch uh, time. So uh, those games are actually kind of late for me, 7 and 9, 30, especially on a day where I have to get up early. But uh, we have Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, Egypt early on. Uh, Egypt being a 61% favorite at this very, very, very moment. And, Ga and uh, Nigeria, 65% favorite in their, in their respective ties. Um, we would have a great Saudi Arabia, Australia, where there's nothing to play for. Then, of course, we have the European uh, playoffs is also on uh, Tuesday, where uh, Poland 58% over Sweden and Portugal 77% over North Macedonia. Not very so, so surprisingly, the final path will be played in June, as will be the intercontinental uh, playoff and, you know, also, also the other playoffs um, that will happen there. And then we have the late games in Africa, where um, Algeria 
is now an 86% favorite at home to Cameroon. So that's pretty much done and dusted. Morocco 70% over the DRC and also Tunisia with 85% over Mali. So uh, except for Egypt, Senegal, that is kind of still tightish. I think everywhere else, there are pretty clear favorites uh, moving forward. In South America, as, as I said, the final uh, spot is between Peru, um, Chile and Colombia. Um, and Peru, with a home win against Paraguay, can seal the deal. Go into the playoff, and the playoff will then probably against Australia, or, as I said already, uh, could also be the UAE or Iraq. Uh, in any case, Peru would be heavily favored in either of these. So, uh, as I said, Peru against Par Par Paraguay, Colombia, away to Venezuela. Uh, that's a derby, by the way, so uh, that uh, might also play in, in Peru's favor. Uh, Chile at home and with to Uruguay might not be an easy one. Then I said that's the player final for Oceania is also uh, now is then on on uh, Wednesday is on Wednesday, and then uh, on Wednesday we also have the final round of Concacaf qualifying. So that's it. And then on the first of April we get a World Cup draw, and we had it already for last time. But uh, if you don't only know me through this channel, but not through through my blog. I have been for years, and this is since 2010 when I started uh, um, saying it. The pots should be arranged according to the FIFA ranking. If you have the FIFA ranking, use it. Make it, because up until then, no one cared, 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 cared about it because the pots were always, you know, you decide the big teams, blah, 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 hosts, and so on. And then it goes by region. For 2018, we finally got it that it was according to the FIFA ranking and we do it again. And I say, you can say what you want about the FIFA ranking. I'm not sure if it's the best ranking out there. But if you have such a ranking, use it for seeding. And that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, they use the computer to tell you which uh, teams cannot go somewhere. So I think this is rather interesting. Um, if I have the chance this week, and I might not, I will actually maybe publish... Um, uh, before the draw, kind of a little table of who can play whom in the, in the, in the group because I think and you definitely will get my first uh, prediction of who will go to the World Cup. Uh, so it will be the top eight, the top eight seeded teams going pot one, two, and three, and um, they take into account. Yes, we have not the full field, but they will uh, take country restrictions there into account too. So uh, for instance, the winner of the playoff path. Uh, with Wales, um, Ukraine and Scotland will of course be counted as, as, as European team but for the intercontinental playoffs. For instance, uh, let's say Peru play Australia and uh, Costa Rica play New Zealand, then those two cannot be paired with other uh, South American or Asian teams or in the other case uh, CONCACAF or all uh, UFC teams respectively. Makes a whole lot of sense. I'm very happy. I have a feeling that when we look at the matrix, who can play with whom, that there might be actually some unevenness in there. But hey, so be it. I rather have it a little bit more seated than that we have. Because the other way, if you do it by region, you get really, really uneven groups, uh, which is not fair to the teams involved. So yeah, that's it with my World Cup update. I have a plan to show you maybe a jersey today. And let's see, Wednesday, I probably will post the video a little bit later because I'm quite busy in the morning. So uh, just hold the horses. I might actually wait even until uh, Thursday. But um, I, cannot, I have not yet mapped out the schedule for that. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so that you're updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!